Bueno, bienvenidos al Cornea Day de Oftalmo Córdoba. Vamos a comenzar con la primera masterclass del día que va a estar a cargo del profesor Máximo Bucín. Máximo, you can start. Ok, I'm here. Thank you, Tiziano. So let me try to share my screen. Yeah. Can you, can you see my screen? Can I go? Yes, yes, you can, you can start. Ok, thank you very much, Tiziano for your nice words about the time you spent with me here in Italy. Um, as Tiziano said, I have been devoted to the development of endothelial keratoplasty. And today I will make basically a summary highlighting what to me seems to be one of the most rewarding techniques that has been developed, that have been developed, namely the ultra thin design. Well, there is Oh, oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't come forward. How come? Okay. So, endothelium, there is no doubt that nowadays, if we have a decompensated endothelium, we perform endothelial keratoplasty. And basically, we have three choices available. The, let's call the old, the eldest one is VSEC that uh, I personally performed towards the end of 2004. I was one of the first surgeons in the world. And uh, later on in 2006, Dr. Mellis proposed to, re to transplant just endothelium and decimate, no stroma component. Um, and he performed the first procedure, as I said, in 2006, after few attempts in vitro, the first one of which in 2002. Finally, in an attempt of combining the advantages of the two procedures, uh, namely the ease of technical ease of VSEC and the visual uh, results outcome of VMEC, I have proposed transplanting a very thin graft with a minimal stromal component. So the question is, of course, what is best for which surgeon and for which eye? Uh, if we look at the past, we see that VMEC was, as you saw, was performed for the first time in a human in 2006. In America, it took five years before a few hundred of people received this operation, while still in 2011, over 20,000 people received a DMEC. Over time, this has changed because DMEC has gained popularity, but still last year, there were still more DZ procedures performed than DMEC were. And if you are proficient, Actually, even in this uh, highly myopic eye that has had a PK and a, DZ, a failed DZEC with a filtering lab, you can perform a DMEC. This is an example of my technique, the pull through technique, that especially in these difficult eyes has the advantage of an increased control over the graft unfolding and placement and allows even performing this type of technique in these eyes, which actually are ideal candidates because this is the only way to minimize uh, the possibility of an endothelial rejection. So we don't do this in these difficult eyes to show how good we are, but just to reduce the chances of immunologic rejection. Basically, the, the good candidate for DMEC is only is a patient who has hooks and has uh, coronary compensation by the normal anatomy and good visibility in the anterior chamber. And whether you do DZEC or UT or ultra thin or ultra of the ultra thin type or DMEC, these are all the things you need to know. And I would like just to stress the fact that nowadays it seems that DMEC is the procedure of choice to show your skills. In other words, if you do DMEC, you are a first class surgeon. If you do a DZEC, you are sort of a second class surgeon. That's not true, I think, and I will see that, that there is place for both techniques and each of them has distinctive advantages. First thing to consider is the preoperative eye status, and then we we'll look through the rest. So in order to do DMEC, I want to be able to see well, I need a normal anatomy, and it must be well fit. If the patient has a visual potential of 2100, he will not even be able to see the difference between a DZEC and a DMEC, so it's not worth to go through the difficulties of DMEC when DZEC, or especially of the ultra thin type, and achieve the same uh, goal in even more short. Not only, but let's say this eye 
has a failed pre-K graph, and I could do a DSEC, whereas the poor visibility secondary to the uh, edema in the failed graph will not allow me to do a DMA. This patient went to hand motion to point eight vision. And even more so in eyes like this that do not have uh, any barrier between anterior chamber and vitreous cavity. And the DMA graph will simply fall to the back, whereas we can anchor the donor of these graph uh, to this uh, patient's cornea and achieve a 0.6 vision, which is what this patient could see best ever after the trauma that's almost destroyed his eye. Finally, an example of those eyes where I, I really think it's not worth to do a DMEC, these eyes, that this eye has had seven retinal surgeries, four glaucoma surgeries, he's, he's, he's an aphakic eye as a consequence again of a trauma. And he actually proposed to take, to perform a nucleation at that time, but the retinal surgeon could save the eye and he could improve count, counting fingers from hand motion, thanks to a DZ. Regarding the surgical technique, you need to master all these um, phases of the procedure, both in thin DZ and in DMEC. But my, especially for DMEC, it is important for you to take a fellowship to be able to see a large number of cases performed by the same surgeon, and especially have close monitoring of all the patients you operate. You learn during your fellowship from the mistakes or from the solutions that you see being proposed to different problems that may come across. What about outcome? This is the main reason why some people advocate performing DMEC. The statistics vary, but the number of patients reaching 2020 among those that have a 2020 potential seems to be lower with DZEC than with DMEC. This is a patient of mine, one eye DMEC, the right one, one eye thin DZEC. And actually the thin DZEC is better. And if you see, when we, when we speak about ultra thin DZEC, we talk about graphs that are 40 to 50 microns thick in, uh, in total. Here is the, or the OCT of the anterior segment, and you see there is really little difference between the two graphs. The important fact is that Nowadays, we can, um, through the eye banks, we can have quality control of the tissue we cut. The tissue on top is perfect for surgery. The tissue at the bottom instead is no good and is discarded by the eye bank. You see, it has irregularities in the, of this stromal surface and it's much thicker on one side than on the other side. So this, if we didn't have the check of the eye bank, could be implanted and we would have a poor result. So, on the other hand, when we speak to DMEC, we see that although all patients have a 2020 visual potential, not all of them reach 2020. So, there must be a reason that does not include the presence of stroma. Dr. Mellis has shown that what matters is actually the type of eye that we operate. And indeed, it is a different thing whether we operate an eye like the one on the left that has had boroskeratopathy for a few months or we operate the eye on the right that has actually only good in the central corner, is still 0.8. This will recover much more quickly than the one on the left. But what about what we're talking about, ultra thin DZEC versus DMEC? So this is again the comparison between two, the two eyes of the same patient operated on with two different techniques. At the slit length, it's really difficult to, to see which one is which because the true ultra thin DZE is below 100 micron and it becomes difficult for you to see. The Academy has issued a, a report that seems to favor DMEC over DZE. Notice that they say seems to be better, not is better. And first thing is that they compared uh, DZE of the regular type and not DZEC of the thin type to DMEC. Plus, if you want uh, to really make a good comparison, you need to have prospective randomized studies that are well powered with same characteristics at the beginning of the, of, the, of the trial among all the patients that are included. And you need to perform the same intervention and you need to have no dropout. 
So these are the studies that were reviewed by the Academy. If you look, I, I marked everything in red because very few of those criteria are satisfied by these studies. Some do not satisfy any of these criteria. Short follow-up or different types of procedures, especially thickness of the graph is either non-reported or is uh, higher than 100 micro. So this does not take account, into account that DSEC has evolved from a generic uh, conventional DSEC to a thin DSEC with uh, a minimal stromal component. I have been asked by ophthalmology to uh, comment on uh, a recent publication by a Dutch group that makes the comparison once again between ultra thin DSEC and DMEC and to uh, comment also about the competing study that was performed in California, again between DMEC and ultra thin DSEC. These are the two studies. The first one is called the DETECT study and trial number two is the Dutch study. So as you see here, first of all, the American study in terms of indications is not as homogeneous as the other one, neither it is so regarding the procedures performed because it includes both simple DSEC and uh, triple procedures and simple DMEC and triple procedures. Then here comes the, the main issue. These studies are powered to detect differences in final visual acuity at one year. We're talking about results at one year. So the American study is powered to 80% to detect the difference in six letters, whereas the Dutch study is more powered to 90%, but to detect a difference that is a little bit bigger, 10 letters. So the one study says that DMEC is better, the other study says there is no difference, and it could be like that, it could be that we, uh, as long as 10 letters are concerned, there is 90% uh, chances that will be no difference. If you go a little bit more in detail to six letters, maybe that uh, the DMEC is a bit better, but you know, we are talking about very subtle difference. Neither of the studies is powered to detect differences in cell count or complications, but I would like to draw your attention about the complications. You see, uh, the statistic can show everything and the opposite of everything. Here they used the Fisher's exact test to show that the rebubbling rate between thin DSEC and DMEC is not significantly higher in one of the two categories, whereas the Dutch study showed a significant difference. And if we look at it, it's only six versus one. This is really clinically relevant. But if you, as I say, if you, if you do a, a Fisher exact t-test, it shows the, the statistic is not significant simply because we have too little number of individuals in this, uh, in this experiment. If you use instead a chi-square value and include group together all the adverse effects, there is a statistically significant difference. So this is just to say that depending on which test we choose, we can have and which kind of sample we, uh, we enter into the statistical analysis, we can have different results. But to me, what counts is actually that clinically, I think it's very relevant, the fact that if I propose DMEC, I have six times more chances of detachment requiring rebubbling than if I perform, than I have if I perform instead a thin diesel. So I think that the evidence that these studies show is not so compelling towards one of the two methods. There are advantages and disadvantages. Certainly the complications are more with DMEC than with thin DSEC. And in terms of visual acuity, the difference is really very, very subtle. Of course, we need more studies and we will be able to know more. And I thank you very much for your attention and for staying tuned despite all the technical problems. Thank you. Bye-bye. Un gran honor haberlo tenido aquí con nosotros. Muchas gracias por la paciencia, por los problemas técnicos. Y bueno, acá nos llegó una pregunta que queríamos hacerle. Eh, una pregunta desde la India. Que, que usted, ¿Qué importancia le da a la periferia de la córnea previo al trasplante? ¿Es importante tomar mediciones periféricas de recuento endotelial, ¿cuál es su importancia de la córnea periférica? You know, uh, the, the peripheral cell count 
may make a difference in deciding whether to do a combined procedure or just a cataract surgery. I mean, there is no real guideline, but if you, if you see no cells in the periphery and it's full of good, uh, then you will have to do a, a triple procedure. Instead, if you see a periphery with a good endothelial cell count, like 2,000 or even more, that will, so that will be able to go through a fake emulsification without causing endothelial decompensation. So it's worth to do first the phaco in doubt, and then later on the, the cornea, even if we must say that vision through a cornea with gutte is not as good as through a cornea that has no gutte. But this is what how I orientate myself. Okay, perfecto. Tenemos otra pregunta que nos dicen si tenemos una diferencia de rebubbling, de tasa de rebubbling entre standard DSEC y ultra thin DSEC. No, I would say it's, there is no difference. You know, the only, uh, you have more chances of detachment if you uh, operate an eye that has had a PK, probably because the posterior surface is not as even as in a normal corner. But other than that, I don't think it makes any difference. Ok, profesor, bueno, muchísimas gracias por su participación, magnífica su presentación, un gran gusto verlo y bueno, estaremos en contacto en breve y muchísimas gracias okay. por estar con nosotros. Ok, chao, Tiziano. Chao, chao. chao. chao.